Hi, welcome to another video. I have been using GLM 4.7 for a bit now. I was given early access to the models by the team there, and to sum up my thoughts, it is the best open model yet, by a long shot. As you would remember, I have covered GLM 4.5, GLM 4.6, and even GLM code models that came before all this. These models have been really amazing for a variety of reasons. They have been open weights for a while now, and all their models are generally open weights. Cursor's Composer 1 model is even said to be a fine tune of the GLM 4.5 variant. So, yeah, their models have been really great. GLM 4.6 dropped exactly on the same day as Claude 4.5 Sonnet, and it challenged that model. However, now we have a new improved version of that model, which is now called GLM 4.7. Now, what is GLM 4.7? Well, GLM 4.7 is a model that is a pretty good improvement over the last generation. In benchmarks alone, it scores about a 6% improvement in SWE Bench. Multilingual SWE Bench is up by 13%, and Terminal Bench 2.0 has a score of 16.5%. They also say that it has significant improvements on complex tasks in mainstream agent frameworks such as Claude Code, Kilo Code, Klein, and Roo Code. It also takes a major step forward in UI quality. It produces cleaner, more modern web pages, and generates better looking slides with more accurate layout and sizing. GLM 4.7 achieves significant improvements in tool using. Significantly better performances can be seen on benchmarks such as T2 Bench and on web browsing via BrowseComp. It also delivers a substantial boost in mathematical and reasoning capabilities, achieving 42.8% on the HLE benchmark compared to GLM 4.6. Based on the scores and previous track record of GLM models, I can say that these are at least not benchmaxed models like Gemini or GPT 5.2, which is great to see. They have significantly improved the visual quality of the designs made by GLM. To be honest, the only model before Gemini that was good at visual designs was GLM and it feels good that they have doubled down on this thing. It is great in a ton of places, but that's enough cherry-picked results. Let's look at my benchmarks. If you guys have seen my Minimax model video, then you'd know what position it scores. But let's go through the results first, and then look at the scoring. First up, we got the floor plan, and well, the functionality works. But the plan of the design is all over the place. Though, I like that you can hover over the rooms and see their names and stuff. Then we've got the SVG Panda holding a burger, and it is quite good as well. The hands are pretty good, the body is also good, and it is also animated. It floats and blinks its eyes, which is really very cool. Then there's the Pokeball in 3JS, and it is really good at this as well. You can see the dimensions of the ball are quite good, and it reflects light and everything, which is really great. After this, we've got the chessboard with autoplay, and it is really the best generation in a while. Like, the colors of the board are really slick. The pieces are not emojis like most other models do. The horse's head is not there, but that's fine. And the autoplay also makes some good moves. So, this is kind of cool. After this, we've got the Minecraft game, and it nails this one as well. You can see the mist, you can see the grass, you can move and everything, which is great. Really very cool. Then there's the majestic butterfly flying in the garden, and it is also really good. The butterfly looks exactly like a butterfly. It flies correctly, the wings flap correctly, and it's a great generation overall for sure. Then, 
we've got the Rust CLI tool, and it is also quite good. And so is the Blender script for the Pokeball. But they both are not very great. The triplets and convex pentagon remain majorly unsolved, while the riddle gets solved. This makes it score the third position on the leaderboard, which is above Sonnet 4.5 and GPT 5.2. It is slightly below Opus, and obviously a lot below Gemini 3 Pro. Gemini 3 Pro just does well on one-shot questions, but agentic questions are where it falls apart. So, let's check out the agentic benchmarks for this model as well. Let's start with the Go TUI calculator, where I ask it to use lip gloss and bubble tea to build a calculator using Go that is visual. So. It did that, and it is really good. I used Kylo code for this. You can go ahead and select the model there and use it all you want. You can use ZAI's GLM coding, which is actually insanely cheap and starts from just $3, I believe, and quarterly, and everything are multiples of the same prices. So, you can check that out. It is really very good. Anyway, the Go TUI calculator is actually quite good. It works insanely well. The colors are quite slick, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Then we've got the Movie Tracker app in Expo with the TMDB API, and it does quite well on it for a one-shot generation. The movies show up nicely in a carousel. You can hit the movie, and it opens up a nice inner page for you to see the movie details. It also looks insanely nice to work with. You can also get the Git Tracker-like interface for tracking movie watching, which is also good to see. After this, we've got the Svelte Kanban app. Now, this is where it falls apart a bit. It isn't very great in Svelte. It makes rookie mistakes. The syntax can be wrong at times, although it was able to make the login pages, which work well. The inner pages also work. The back end, however, doesn't function correctly. But the design and everything is way better than other models. So, this is somewhere in the middle. The Nuxt app is also the same story, and so is the Tori app. In Godot, it has gotten really good and can write the life bar and jump mechanics in the game quite well. The open code question is also a pass with this model. It finally passes this question as well. This makes it score the fifth position on the leaderboard, which is great. This is a really good model. It is really cheap, way better than Gemini Flash, and works really very well for sure. So, yeah, this is the best open model for now, especially in coding. I think that this is currently the best model if you want to do AI coding. It is fast. The API is cheap. The coding plan is even cheaper, and the weights are also open. Meaning that even if you use it via third-party inference providers, then it can be really cool. There are things like Synthetic, which have been working well with GLM 4.7 for me. So, you can check them out as well. Verdant will also soon integrate it, I believe which is what I have been using. It seems like a really good improvement. Instead of using Sonnet, this seems like a relatively better option, and combining this with Opus can fetch you some insane results, which I'll also talk about in the next videos. It still isn't as great as Opus, but it is far better than Gemini if you care about that. Gemini Flash's price against these models seems like a ripoff for sure. It can also go on for long periods of time now on one task, which was very buggy before. But that seems completely fixed now, and that's why it does so good on the benchmarks. That is majorly about it. Also, I wanted to mention some things about the coding plan. So, many people asked me if it reasons or not in the coding plan. Well, it reasons, but the thinking traces are not available in the coding plan API from what I could gather. So, it's just that. The model remains the same even in the coding plan. It can be slow, however, sometimes in the $6 plan, 
but considering the price, I'll say that it's worth it. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.